What's up guys, in this video what I want to do is I want to start talking about some of the dietary supplements and over-the-counter supplements that can be used as treatment strategies for various psychiatric illnesses. So to begin with, I just want to start with the evidence for dietary supplements used in augmentation strategies for the treatment of depression. And in particular, we'll talk about L-methylfolate. So the first thing you want to know is whether or not the person is actually deficient in folate. And so that person should have a documented low level of folate. And there could be a number of different reasons. One possible reason is that they can have low levels of methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, which is an enzyme involved in, particularly it's involved in the reaction to convert the amino acid homocysteine to the amino acid methionine. And that's part of the methyl cycle. A little bit more detailed than you probably need to know, but at least some, to some degree important to know where that's operating. And it also helps you to explain why some people with low levels of this particular enzyme will actually also have high homocysteine levels, which is another way of testing to see whether or not uh, this person has a deficiency in folate. But the preferred method really is testing the RBC folate level, and that's for a couple of reasons. One, the plasma folate level is actually really sensitive to diet. So it only reflects the short-term balance of folate levels, and it can actually be it can actually decline after a few days of fasting. So depending on the person's dietary habits, the plasma folate levels may or may not truly reflect the actual um, levels that a person has. However, if you look for RBC folate levels, it's less affected by dietary changes. So it reflects more of a time average value of folate. And the way I kind of think about this is that it's similar to hemoglobin A1C and fasting plasma glucose per se, right? We can do a fasting plasma glucose and it will tell us kind of a snapshot of what the person's blood sugar is like. However, if we were to look at the HbA1c, it gives us sort of a three-month picture of their uh, glycemic control or sugar control. So that's a that's kind of a good way of, of thinking about this as well. It's a similar situation. Um, the plasma folate levels more than four nanograms per mil actually rule out folate deficiency, and in the absence of any recent anorexia or fasting plasma folate uh, acid levels less than two. Or diagnostic of folate deficiency. So it just kind of gives you an idea if you're looking at the laboratory uh, results, what would be sort of diagnostic of a folate deficiency and what would kind of exclude a folate deficiency in general. So the next thing you want to do is you want to have a patient who's responding poorly or inadequately to antidepressants. So there are certain high-risk populations. Uh, one very, very common one that you'll encounter a lot in medicine and psychiatry in any area really is alcoholic patients. So anyone with alcohol use disorder, and in particular severe alcohol use disorder, will have deficiencies in, in several vitamins, and those commonly, most commonly being thymine and folate. So these people will often be given IV thymine and folate when they come to the hospital, um, and then supplement it with oral forms of those two vitamins. Uh, any patient who's pregnant or lactating, anybody with an eating disorder, uh, anorexia, bulimia, etc., GI disorders, including inflammatory bowel disease and celiac disease, which is a malabsorption disease. Medications are an important one, and a couple that I'll point out is methotrexate, um, phenytoin, oral contraceptives. But the ones common in psychiatry that I'll point out are lamotrigine can be used at times in psychiatry. Uh, valproate, also known as Depakote, is used extensively in psychiatry. So, you know, watch out for the patients that are on valproate. Um, also metformin. Metformin is probably the most common diabetes medication, well type 2 diabetes medication, oral diabetes medication use. So watch out for patients on metformin and also think about antacids because that's also a very common medication used by a lot of people. You can also look for Hispanic or Mediterranean populations because they tend to have lower levels of this particular MTH, MTHFR, so methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme. Um, and an effective strategy, if you're trying to, to treat this, would be to um, add L-methylfolate oral supplement to any person with major depressive disorder who's a partial or, or a non-responder to SSRIs at about 15 milligrams per day. So you can add 15 milligrams per day and see what happens. Again, the most important things to remember here is that you want to have some kind of documented 
low levels of folate indicating that you truly have a deficiency. Um, the other thing is you want to look for someone who's obviously on an antidepressant and who's either partially responding or not responding. And in particular, there's people who fall into the high-risk populations, alcoholics, pregnancy, eating disorders, GI disorders, medications that could possibly do it, on medications that could possibly do it, or who are of Hispanic Mediterranean populations who tend to, again, have these deficiencies in MTHFR. Um, so that's pretty much it. I'm looking forward to doing other videos on different augmentation strategies for um, dietary supplements and... Actually, the one, the one last thing I want to throw in here, I'll just bring onto my screen real fast, is that this was one of the studies that I found. This was um, actually published in 2013, and it was in the uh, Primary Care Companion for CNS Disorders. And what they did was they looked at assessing the effects of uh, L-methylfolate in depression management in a real-world setting. So they used L-methylfolate. It had been shown in some other studies to enhance antidepressant response. So what they aimed to do in this particular study was assess the change in depression severity and medication satisfaction in patients who were prescribed L-methylfolate along with the um, antidepressant in the naturalistic setting. So the bottom line in this, and you can read the methods and results, and the whole paper is actually available for free if you're interested, but you know the take-home point here is that in a naturalistic setting, patients who are managed with L-methylfolate actually achieve statistically significant improvements in self-reported depression symptoms as well as functioning with greater satisfaction as well as functioning and greater satisfaction with their medication treatment so basically overall uh, supplementing with this particular um, product L-methylfolate can be beneficial if you're taking antidepressants if you suffer from depression and in particular again if you have some kind of deficiency in folate